I was born in Iran in November 8th of 1960 and uh, I came to Canada in December 19th of uh, 1983 and I've been here since and I never went back. The, this is the early September of 1981. The religious government of Iran, the new government, has executed my twin brother and uh, my some of my cousins and some of my closest friends I grew up in the neighborhood with. And uh, my I went to I don't know I think maybe 12 funeral in a 40 days in 1981 and uh, in 1983 I came to Canada and there was just a, we just got cut in the revolution. W one thing put me on ease to go on with my life these days is that I realized that I have to let them live through my spirit so I'm I'm kind of settled with it. I guess part of me was killed in 1981 also, so to carry on with that, I really, really had a hard time, and like I have no problem admitting that. I had a, uh, and the only thing that gave me hope was in the 2003, December 22nd, that my ex had a child with me, which is my son, right? That was the first time in my life I felt a hope. As soon as you become a father, your perspectives constantly, immediately changes. And that's what happened to me. And uh, I would say I became a little bit more positive person than uh, because of that. I always looked at life from the pessimistic and negative point of the view. But when that son was born, that definitely changed. Definitely changed. I would say I became a very loving father to the child, and I did my best to bring that child up. But, uh, you know, there's an old expression they say, when the poverty knocks on the door, love jumps out the window. I think that's what happened because of, because of the recession of 2008, when my mismanagement of my business, I used to have a car dealerships. And uh, when they went down, she became, and I lost my condo, our condo, and she became a very, very angry person, and I think that what provoked her. And, uh, and it's been held since, in a way. About two weeks ago became two years that I haven't seen my child. Okay. And uh, the reason I haven't seen my child because I was my la uh, I was seeing him under the supervision of an excess program, and that was the period that family court asked one of the late uh, lady by the name of Marcy to be advocate for my son and come and search what's going on with the family and she came and she interviewed family she met with the brother of the child she met the step uh, uh, the child the first child's father and uh, she took us to baseball game and she realized that the mother is the isolator and uh, she was going to report to the uh, court and my ex and her lawyer they knew that, and immediately to put a stop to that, they said the child is not happy because when we were saying goodbye in August of 2016, an access program, I hugged them and the child is not uh, comfortable with the hug. And since that day, they haven't let me see my child. I was arrested in 2009, so what I did, I went to the court and I went on a self-defense, and I challenged her, and I brought some witnesses. I brought her brother-in-law, her ex-husband. I brought a variety of the witnesses to stand. And in this paper, Judge Ferguson O'Donnell says that uh, I was comparable 
to the professional Quran attorney. Hmm. All the 40 somehow charges they laid against me, I never find guilty of any of them. Like I have no criminal record of doing anything wrong, right? And if I haven't done anything wrong, I'm, I, if I'm not guilty, why is the reason they don't let me see my child? Three months later, she goes and she starts laying another charges because now I'm going after the custody of the child. This time, she pulls the ace one and she says that I have appropriately touched the child. And from there, they took me to the, they took me at night, right? And they charged me for some, something I, I don't know, like for uh, calling her or something, which is I never did. Following day, they released me from the Thousand Finch. I went to work, two o'clock in the afternoon, they came to my work, back to back, they took it, they took me back to the police station from my work, which is I lost that job, by the way. And uh, this time they charged me for appropriately touching my child. And then I, I didn't see him for a year and a half or something till I, they, they brought him to court, right? But uh, in that period, they keep charging me with the bridges and even one time, her boyfriend said that I went to the East York, took a picture of their house, which is, thank God, I had all kinds of alibis. I was in the West, so we went to the police and they proved that they were lying. So many times they charged me, and, like, and they, she was good. She would go on a Friday to make the allegation, so I would stay in the jail till Monday morning to bring me to the front of a judge. Between 2000, October of 2009 to the maybe summer of 2013, I would say I've, I've been, every time I got arrested, right, I think about 15 times, and every time I got arrested, they, they sent me to the fingerprints also. When we went, when we went to front of a judge, again we went front of a Ferguson O'Donnell. It was so ironic that the same judge was taking over that, and the, they was gonna preview the case to see if they, they they should bring me to the court for the appropriately touching my child. They, and they brought the child. And he was eight years old. I remember exactly. You know, I think, uh, the, right after Father's Day, Sunday was the Father's Day, and the Monday I saw him after a year and a half, but they put the, they put the biggest screen in front of him so he couldn't see me, and they asked him all kinds of questions. And finally, Judge was convinced that this child, this kid has been programmed. And Judge was very upset, and I remember correctly, Judge told the prosecutor that uh, make sure that lady, that my ex, she knows that this case shouldn't come back here no more. And then I thought I won the case and everything. And when we went to the front of a family court, I was so happy I'm going to see my son. Judge Brown Stone looks at the papers and he's, he, he, he said, it doesn't say you're not guilty. He just said they quit it, that you might be guilty. Every time 32 Division would have picked me up, you could feel the sympathy from the cops, but they said they have no other choice. Mm -hmm. And when we went to the police station, constantly all the detectives, they would have tell me that my ex has no credibility left with the 32 Division or any police station in Toronto. But they said they had no other choice because that law requires them to, to arrest me. I remember exactly in October 16 of 2009, she was so mad, she started hitting me. And I knew she has, she has something planned. And I knew that I will never, like I, I'm not a violent man, 
I will never touch especially a woman. I'm, yes, as a child I've been in the street fights when I was growing up, but I never fight especially against a woman. That is the day, night, she used tell, telling the cops that I beat her. There was other way around, but she used it against me that day. And even detectives, they tell me this case shouldn't have gone to court. But despite the fact we went to the court and I got quitted, right, but damage was already done that to my, my life to get lost in the paperwork of a system. And there's like a, so many victims like me out there that we, why, I just, I just don't understand why it has to be like that. that and whatever we say, whatever I, whatever I have done for the last eight, nine years has been like a screaming on the water. Like nobody hears you. No, no, no. And seems like nobody cares. Like even my good friend, lawyer, friend of mine, he says, listen, if you don't, if you had the money, your son would be sitting at home watching a baseball with you. That that truly hurt my hurt me that I have to buy back my son from the system, mm -hmm. and if I don't have the money, like you know, it's just someone someone else is playing the role of my, my father, uh, father to my child, and probably they think the original father, which is me, I'm the worst guy ever, and they rescue this child, right? So it, it, it is not true that the truth has to come out eventually. Like, I, I had to give up. The reason I give up because my child since six years old, he has been interviewed so many times with the police, mm. Children Aid Society, Boots Camp. Like, my ex used this child to the maximum, right? And just to leave that child, like I said, okay, I back up as long as you back up too, as long as children in a society doesn't have to interfere with his life, and just to let him live his life. And and I, I'm a hundred percent sure one day he'll he'll be back, right? But most important things I think over here gets. Uh, lost in the translation, that the true victim is the child. I know my son loves me. We had a, such a great relationship, right? They cannot kill the love in that child toward the father, right? So what is going to come out, out of that child in the future? I, for her, the soul didn't mean nothing. That's something that just always bothered me, even between among her family. She has separated this child, not only from my side of the family, my side, the c cousins and everything, right? Even from her side, like the child might see her cousins once or once a year or something like that. She got the child in such a confinement, so child wouldn't talk with nobody, like. And I don't know how she gets away with that. Everything looks so dark. I just couldn't see any hope. I was getting up 2 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat properly. And it took... It was just one month and I lost almost 20 pounds. And uh, I was very, very... I don't know if you should say sad or like... I just couldn't laugh or nothing. If we would go on another month, I don't think I would survive it. I, I tell you something, you, the, your life gets such a the frustration point. If you have no clue what is right or who, who you have nobody. Mm -hmm. And like you go to the court system, it's just everything is just... Uh, everybody just gets a paycheck. But you have no one to go ask them, what can I do? Or, 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 and you know what I mean? Every time I ask the lady, oh, oh, sign a peace bond. Why would I sign the peace bond when I haven't done nothing? Just take me to the court and charge me and send me in front of the judge because I'm not going to sign any peace bond, right? So I think that's, the, that's the, one of the main 
reason, you know, I challenged them. But I didn't know directly to go anywhere. And uh, I find you guys by luck with, through the friend. Okay. Otherwise, this wouldn't happen either.